going live. You're live. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are working on the straight razor project and this is one that I have I've wanted to make for years. Um, I've yeah, it's well, it's just one of those things when you're a man, a straight razor is just like it's a manly thing to have. Um, so I, I was at a, a sale a while ago and I found uh, 35 straight razor blanks that were made um, a long, long time ago. So these were hand forged blanks. And so I bought all of them and I've now sold all of them except for these two. Uh, this set I made in a video recently. If you want to see that, there's a link to it down in the description below. And uh, this one I am saving for this particular build. Um, so I sold them all, um, and if you don't have one of these, there are a few places where you can find straight razor blanks, um, though they are harder to come by and they are rather expensive. For the cheaper quality ones, you're expecting like 50 bucks a piece. The nicer ones, you're getting up to around $100, $150 for just the blank. Um, so today we are gonna be making the, uh, the scales that actually go onto it, the wooden piece that attaches to the blade itself. And we're going to be roughing it, gluing it, and getting it close to approximation. And then next week, we're actually going to be grinding and sharpening the blank, showing how to actually do that, how to sharpen a blade, uh, and then doing the assembly, the final details on it. So hopefully we're gonna be getting that all in. Um, I got a couple things to talk about, but the I have a couple options that I wanna make these scales for it. Uh, the, the scales for this one were made out of um, a, what do they call it? It's a, uh, they call it teak. It's not, it's a much softer wood. Uh, let me show you what we've got on here. Wrong button. And I've got a couple options for the, uh, for the other scales, the new ones, and I wanted to give you guys the options. So this is what we had for the first one. Option number one is actually to make them out of palm, um, which is a really, really weird wood to make them out of. Uh, number two, I have is this piece. Is that because you hold them in the palm? Of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> palm in the palm of my hand. Oh, um, then this, which is um, um, dense hardwood, um, not ebony, not teak. Uh, it's ipe. Uh, ipe, a very, very hard wood. And it, it has like this, this soft tone, um, but underneath it's a little bit darker. And it's a very, very durable wood, very, very good for water. And then the third option is this, which is actually live oak. Uh, very, very durable, heavy, hard wood, um, great for water. And so those are the three options. And I want you guys to comment down below what you want me to make the scale out of, and we'll actually make that out of it live. Um, so I was kind of going back and forth and thinking, do I make a scale or not? And there's a bunch of different things you can actually do is laminate together different pieces and put stripes together so you can actually make a design or shape with it. Um, and historically speaking, they were originally made out of wood, but then as soon as some of the plastics started coming out, they made them out of plastic. Um, and so you can still find a lot of antique ones that were made out of plastic. You'll, you will find a lot that were made out of bone, um, ivory, and the such. Um, but uh, wooden ones were not as common because they generally get wet, and any glue or anything you have holding them together will break down. Um, so some interesting things about that. And there are... There is a crazy amount of history and tradition that go into these, and so you'll see all different types and different people talking about that this is traditional, and no, this is traditional, and there's a lot of arguments we're going to be talking about when we get into this. Um, so things coming up in the, the Wood by Right world. Um, number one, I'm going to be, um, let's see, the next meeting, oh yes, um, the 29th, 28th of March? 29th, I think. The, the last weekend in March. Um, I'm going to be at the, there's a meet just a couple miles away from here in Loves Park, Illinois, um, just north of Rockford, Illinois. Um, and so I'm going to, to be there and I'm looking forward to meeting any of you who are coming. This is my local meet. It is one of my favorites of the year because I only have to drive a little ways for it, um, which is, I, I feel incredibly lucky to have it that close. Um, so I actually co-host this one um, being as it's so close. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, then we will also be going to the, uh, the national MWTCA meet in June. That will be in uh, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. It's the 20th-ish of uh, June. And I'm actually going to be doing a, uh, a talk on Thursday. And that will be completely free to attend. So you don't have to be an MWTCA member. Um, you can come and hang out for that. So I'm looking forward to seeing you at the national meet in June. So uh, Moonwolf wants to know if I'm going. I'm assuming the one that's right by the house and that depends because my brother's supposed to be getting ordained that day so or yeah right <laughs> yeah right, are you, yeah we'll see we'll what, see what the family's doing we'll see um, it's also so, spring break week yeah there's a lot going on there 
Uh, but the national one, we're probably going to go up as a family. We're going to see how that how that turns out. We will, we'll or see. he'll go up early and we'll come later. I don't know. It's always kind of a fun thing. But being in Green Bay, it's only, what, three hours away from here. It's like his Mecca, so, you know. <laughs> I'm going to close own the, the Green door Bay for Bay. a second because it's distracting me open. Yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, so we want to actually get into this. So do we have a consensus on what we need to make it out of? Oh, hang on. I palm, was... live oak, palm, 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 yeah. palm, 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 live not oak. Not live oak, or not palm. <laughs> palm. Okay, I guess we're making it out of palm. And this is kind of a fun one because palm is a wood, but it, at the same time really isn't a wood because it's kind of like grass in that there's thousands of fibers and there really aren't any um, layers to it like you would in wood. There aren't rings of palm. It is just this homogeneous thing of thousands of strings going through it. Um, and it's a little bit more difficult to work with because it is very stringy and it, it splits apart easily. Um, and they're also like thousands of splinters because they're very, uh, very tiny. Uh, so we'll be doing it out of palm then, because that'll be a fun one. So if you got your kit, you would have gotten a pattern that came with it. And this pattern is a shape that I, uh, I've, you know, I've looked at a whole bunch of different ones, and I found that there, there are a lot that are a really nice even curve to them. I like the ones where the main body has a straight edge, so that when the razor comes down, it actually is parallel with the back of the razor. And what you can see, let me see if I can show you this one. What you can see on this, let me zoom in and focus. There we go. And you see how the back of this is straight with the wood. I kind of like that shape, though a lot have an even curvature from one side to the other. So it's kind of an elongated beam, bean, and it's usually thinner on this end where the, uh, where the hinge is at, and a little bit thicker over here. Other uh, designs to this, number one, what stops this from going down farther is that the blade is actually shaped as a wedge. And it stops when the wedge stops in the wood right there. And it's open on the underside here, so that the blade comes through. So theoretically, if you stuck your finger in there, you would slice your finger. Um, but it sticks out, uh, it keeps it in far enough that it actually will protect it. Uh, some of them actually have these sides are flexible enough so that when it comes in here, the, the wedge will actually split them apart and the flexing of it going in there is what holds it together. Uh, so there's a bunch of different designs for that, but most of them are basically just open all the way through so that the blade comes through, nothing ever touches the actual blade itself inside. Uh, a pretty simple, ingenious design that has been changed thousands of times over the years, and you will see other designs and shapes from other traditions and people, um, but a lot of them tend to kind of fall into that. So I'm going to be using this pattern that I've come out with, and feel free to use your own. What I'm going to grab is some regular um, kids glue. I like doing this for patterns. I'm going to glue up my board, and then I'm going to glue up the pattern and adhere the two together. Any questions so far? No, they're just talking smack because you picked a plant instead of a wood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, palm is a very interesting uh, wood. It, slash whatever it is um, because it, it, it just yeah it's, it's weird so uh, what I'm going to do here is rip this down and I want to actually make a large rectangle to cover this I'm not going to cut it to shape yet I'm actually not going to cut it until we rip it down because it's much easier to rip the two the two scales when it's all as one piece so let's switch over to this one and I'll get you a little closer view of what we're going it's focus 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 there we go. So I've got my piece in here. I'm going to set it up in my vise, and then I'm going to rip it down. Actually, I'm going to put it over here so that I can rip all the way down. So, whoop, move this over here. Now, because I want to rip all the way down this and it is deeper than my back saw, I'm actually going to grab a rip saw. This one? Nope. Sorry. There we go. This one's a little bit duller than I like. This is actually one that I was uh, recently given by a friend at church, and the previous owner has reshaped this quite a bit to fit his hand, and I kind of like it. So I did a little bit of sharpening up, but I actually need to go in and do some more work on it because it's pretty dull, but it's a good, um, uh, what's I'm looking for? Rip saw, there we go. Actually, I think it's a bit too dull. 
Yeah, and now we go to the other one. I need to do more work on that one. Just I wanted to use that one because it's got a history to it, and I like using a saw that has a history. And I'm going to rip it fairly close to that line as I go down. I'm just going to basically cut a straight line. It's going to stay a little farther away from here because we're going to address that a little later. And then once I get down here, we're going to rotate it, cut it into a length, and I'll have a rectangle here that we can work with. We got our blank. Now, if I was really smart and worked ahead of time, I would have moved this pattern over a little closer because now I'm about a quarter inch on the side here. Uh, so I'm going to have to come back and clean that up, but I'll take care of that a little later. What we want to do now is work with this blank. The first thing we have to figure out is how thick do we want these scales to be. On mine, I started with them each a little bit less than a quarter inch. And that allowed me to trim them down. A lot of people like to make these scales really, really thin. They'll bring them down to about an eighth inch each, or even thinner. I've seen some that are just over a sixteenth inch thick. They're, they make these really, really thin. I like them to be a bit thicker because I like having a bit of a handle on here, uh, something that actually feels decent in the hand. So I'm going to start with my scales down at a quarter inch each, and then I can thin them down just a little bit to give it that nice shape and body that I like. But if you want something that's different, you can make your scales whatever you want. So, what that means is I need to make a quarter inch one scale, I'm gonna make another quarter inch for another scale, plus I need the thickness of my saw, which is about a sixteenth inch. So I need this whole thing to be a good bit thinner. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna switch this back over. You have a super chat, by the way. Super chat? Yep. Who is that? Steve, Steve does, does stuff. stuff. Woohoo! Thank you, man. Well, did you read what it said? No, I can't. Uh, this is for the next one. Now you don't have to use grass-based material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is is a palm tree grass? I don't know. I don't know. They've started a whole Plant Lives Matter movement already. <laughs> but, so I'm going to set this at just I'm going to um, half inch for the scales plus a sixteenth inch. So it is going to be at. 9 16th is what I'm setting my marking gauge at. So I'm going to mark this off while Sarah gives us a uh, mom joke. All right, let's see. There is a fine line between numerator and denominator. Only a fraction of people will get this joke. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur would like that one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, palm is a pain to work with. It's, uh, well, it grabs the iron and pulls it over because it's something interesting. I, I don't always like working with the easy woods. I like taking the hard road. Well, That's why I married you. Uh-oh. Why do I feel like I'm being glared at? I don't understand this one. Wow, that was actually, I think, a record time for you this early in the live. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to grab... James is homeless on March 29th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grab a couple dogs. <laughs> And put them in yeah, to make it a little easier to work with. <laughs> because like I'm going to be spending some time with them in the doghouse. <laughs> um, and now with palm, I need to be very, very careful about reading the grain. But the problem is, some of the grains go this way, and some of the grains go that way, and some of the grains go this way. So palm is going to be a lot of fun to work with. I'm going to start with using... Oops, put this down. Start with using a scrub plane. And with that, that line I've put on there, I want to bring it down to that thickness of uh, 9 sixteenths is what I said. Let me show you a little closer what I've got here. <laughs> there we go. Two. So I'm going to grab a scrub plane. And of course I have my, uh, my Stanley 40, which is, um, yeah, it's an actual scrub plane. And we're going to see how close uh, I believe this is the right direction, or closest direction for the grain. Ugh, this is just going to be fun no matter what I do. 
And I'm gonna take it down relatively close to that line. I think I'm actually gonna switch around and just try it from the other side. You can see why this is a pain because it just kind of shreds apart. You gotta have a really nice fine. Yeah, this is a better direction. Almost need to wear safety glasses because this stuff is so wild. And I'm gonna stay a little ways away from my line because, well, this stuff is just a little more difficult. And I'm gonna grab my, I think I'm gonna grab my four and a half. Why? Because I like my four and a half. And then with this, I'm gonna take it right down to that line. You can see these curls. You're not gonna get a full width curl because it just comes up in these thin strips as you go across it. Let's see, maybe just a hair off the line there. And I'm looking at this marking gauge line that I have running all the way around, and I'm just going until I touch that marking gauge line. Just getting really, really close. Okay, I'm at the marking gauge line here. I've got a little bit of it from here to here. I've got a little bit of it from here to here. So basically, I just don't want to touch it here. So I'm going to run the plane from here and stop here. And so I'm just going to lift it out. And there we go. Right at it, all the way around, nice and flat. And there, there is our scale. So now, because I left this so far away from the line over here, I'm going to use the same thing to take it down to thickness this way. I could use a saw and slice it from end to end, but since I've got this all ready to go, I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this. Actually, I'm going to switch over and use my other scrub plane. This one is a modified number five. But because it has a wider bed, the um, arc on the radius is a little bit um, wider. Makes it a little bit easier to control. Not taking off quite as heavy as a cut, but it's not running around the board on me. Yeah, Lord. There we go, we're close enough with that. So there is our rough shape of the two scales. And I'm really liking the look of that. With those pins coming out, that'll be a very different, nice shape to it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to turn this from one scale into two scales. Ooh. Now I could come through and shave this down with them separate, but I'm finding it much easier to cut them apart with it as a block and then tape them back together and work on it as one piece. Um, if you think that that is different for you, go ahead and shape it completely and then cut it apart into two scales. This is just what I've found to be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna take my marking gauge and I'm gonna guess that that is the center. I'm gonna put a little mark from the pin in here. I'm gonna lock this down. I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna see if that falls into the same pinhole. And by Jove, it does. Look at that. So now I can put a line running all the way down this. Now I want to make it relatively heavy so I can see it. And then I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to put the same line on it from the other side. And these should be in the exact same spot. But if there's any variance in the thickness of this, then those two will diverge a little bit. And it looks like there is actually a little bit of variance in the thickness of this. I wonder if I planed a little bit too much in one spot or the other. But what that allowed me to see is if there's two lines side by side, but you're not going to be able to see them with the camera, I can split the difference and have the, the saw come right down the middle in between those. So I'm going to make both lines on all four faces. Any questions when I'm doing this? Um. There's been one, but Alan um, has contributed to my legal fund after your <laughs> egregious comment. But that calls for a mom joke, and then we'll get to your question. What's that? Want, want to know why skeletons are so calm? Why? Because nothing gets under their skin. 
<laughs> There's a reason I married you. Okay, are you ready for a joke or, or a joke? A question? Sure. Okay. Kind of off topic, I think. I don't know. John Juggler. When do you think you will try and blacksmith or forge a shave blade? Um, someday I will. I, I have a desire to timber frame an outdoor working space. And in which case I would have a blacksmith shed, um, you know, a shave horse and some other things like that. I really would love to do that. But that is sometime in the future. When? I do not know. So I'm going to grab my tenon saw. My tenon saw will not be able to go all the way down, but that's okay because I can flip the stick around and come at it from the other side. So I'm going to start out on top. Let me actually show you this a little bit closer. And this is probably the easiest form of resawing. And so if you can do this, you can resaw. I'm going to start right here on the top, and because those two lines are a little bit apart, I'm going to start with the saw splitting the difference right down the middle of the two of them. Just like that. Once I get it established all the way across, I'm going to start lowering my heel and following the line on the side that I can see. And that way I know I'm tracking the line on my side. And I could just cut all the way down, but I want to lean over and make sure I'm still in the line on the back side here. If I'm really worried about it, I can stop and turn the stick around and make sure I'm always looking at it from my side. But in this case, we're going to be tracking really nicely. So I'm just going to keep on going. I know some people actually put a mirror on the back side so they can see it. Actually, I'm tracking off a little bit, so I'm going to have to go ahead and turn it around. I'm just leaning ever so slightly to one side. This will allow me to control the curvature a little bit better on one side. Rather than starting where I was, I'm going to twist the saw in the joint and use it to scratch the side I want to move towards. And this way I can bring the curve back onto line. I don't want to try and adjust the curve all the way at the bottom. I want to adjust the whole thing so that it's now back in line. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. Oh man, this makes it really hard to see this line. <laughs> going good, going good. Good, and going good enough. There we go. It's a little bit off on the back side here, so there's a bit that we're going to have to pull apart. But that's okay, that's why we have hand planes. Any questions while I do this? David T. asked, as projects go, why choose a razor when you have always had a fine facial foliage? <laughs> I shaved my head. I, I actually did uh, shave my head with the razor. And uh, it is dangerous, but works fine. Uh, I don't know. I like a, you know, I you shave You did it because you day. saw a pile of razors and went, hmm, yeah. I want a pile of razors. Just exactly. be honest. There's something very manly about a straight razor where you just get like extra street cred. Okay, I'm going to plane out any of those saw marks, which I was off by a little bit, so that means I just have to plane a couple more strokes. So if I put these dogs down just a little bit, have to put those dogs down. <laughs> nice clean strokes from one side to the other. Get an even amount all the way across. Nice. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll have these two scales that we can put back together. Except for I'm going the wrong direction. I think I need one more pass. Just like that. And now we have these two scales that we can put together. 
and uh, start our shaping on this. So the other thing that's going to come into this is the shape of these. Most of the new ones that I've seen, the, the back and the frame, the whole thing all the way down the tang is the same thickness. But on a lot of the older ones, the back of the blade is a certain thickness. And then at the start of the tang, it actually thins out towards the, towards the bottom. Let me show you this a little closer. And this is something I find to be kind of interesting. Uh, let me see. Okay, we're doing good. Sorry. Uh, focus. Focus. There we go. So you can see how it's thin here and gets thicker and thicker and thicker as it gets up towards the blade. And what this will allow me to do is if I make these scales thin enough and I pinch these together, it is a thinner amount here and they separate as they come up. And you can see how this just isn't going to work there. So there's two different ways you can fix that. Number one, if you make these scales really thin, you can make them flexible. And what happens is that as these, let me just pinch them together, sorry. I make these flexible so that it's the same thickness here and up here and just pinch these together. So as the blade comes down in, it pinches into there, bending these into place. And that's one way they've done. Another way is they take these two scales and they'll actually put a small spacer on this side and a small spacer on this side so that there's actually a little bit of a bump out here on the bottom that then sandwiches the tang in between. And that keeps these two parallel. What I've chosen to do is actually to hollow out these just a little bit so that they fit in here. Let me show you what that looks like. On this one here, the space here is about an eighth inch. And then right up here at the edge of the blade, it's about a 16th inch wider. And then it comes back to just a little over an eighth inch up here at the top. So there's actually a little bit hollowed out from one end to the other. So I'm going to do that on this one. In order to do that, I want to make sure I'm looking at the right end. This thin end here, um, I want to have a little bit of a flat spot here where the pin goes through. And then I'm going to... I'm going to lighten it up here to the point where the blade comes in. So let's see, this one, the blade comes in here. So I want to make it a little bit shallower from this point up to this point. This is the deepest point. And then from here out to here, I'm going to make it shallow again. So I'm going to set this in here Oh, you're my real dog. blurry. And I'm going to focus. There we go. And I'm going to grab a spokeshave. No, let me make sure I grab this right. That one, yep. So, um, I want to mark exactly where on this is the center point. So, I'll just do this. What I want to do is from this X, where that pin goes through, I want to mark the edge of the blade. I want to transfer that around to the other side. Nothing special about that, other than that is where I want the deepest point of this to be. So, I'm going to grab my spoke shave. I'm just going to make... this way. Yeah, it's better. And I'm going to basically make a small stroke, small stroke. Let me see if I can get a better angle on that, sorry. There we go. I'm going to start by here where I had that line. I'm going to make several small strokes and then I'm going to make them longer and longer and longer. Basically just creating a dished area right there. So now, this is really thin here, and it gets thicker out to this point and thicker out to this point. I'm just going to go a little bit more. This palm is difficult to work. And there's nothing that's terribly precise about this. You just want it to be a little bit thinner here than it is at either end. So now with that in place, make sure I've got these right. And so you can see here on the gap here, it's touching for about an inch and a half here, and it's touching for about a three quarter inch up here, but then there's a gap running between the two. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. But on this one, I gotta remember, I don't wanna pull it, I wanna push it because the grain's going the opposite direction. Well, at least it should be. 
Just start a little bit here in the middle. And make the stroke longer and longer. Let me come back here and do it one more time. And that's what we're looking for. So now when I put these together, you're going to see a gap in between the two there. And I think I need to do just a hair more. I want to make those two gaps even from one to the other. There. So, there we go. You can see how there's now a gap in between those two. So now we're ready to start doing our shaping on this. And for that, I'm going to grab some double-sided carpet tape. This is, I, I use this so much for a bunch of weird things in the shop. Anytime I have something thin that I want to plane, I'll often tape it down to the bench with this. And this is the vise that holds it together. So I'm going to tape this on. Any questions while I'm doing this? John Juggler asks, how do you feel about working with the palm at this point? Seems like it is more difficult material to work with. Oh yeah, palm is a, a very difficult wood to work with. Um, and there are very few applications where palm really shines. It just looks intriguing and different. There's just so many, it's like a random zebra wood and almost has a fire texture to it. And it absorbs boiled linseed oil beautifully. Um, and so I think that's one of the reasons, but you know how it goes. <laughs> Which way do I have this? This way to this way. I want to line these up as closely as I can. No, that's not right. That's not right. So it's this way, right? Yes, that's right. That's the way it goes. <laughs> Don't want to glue them on backwards. And because we removed that surface, it's only touching for about a quarter inch, uh, for about three quarter inch out here, and for about an inch and a half back on this end, which is perfectly fine. I'm just going to rip off the excess, get it out of here. And now we can start doing our shaping. And I don't want to shape this completely. I just want to take it to the rough outline all the way around. And so for this, we can put it in the vise and I'm going to use spoke shave. I'm going to use files and we're going to bring it down into a rough shape. First thing I want to do on here is I want to put it in focus is I want to remove this material over here. So I'm going to put this into the vise, holding it at that angle. And actually, I'm just going to cut this with a saw because that's going to be a little bit faster. So I can put the saw on here and just run it down that line. It's really flopsy on here. Actually, with this palm cutting it, and it just grabs the saw, it's going to be faster to do it planing. <laughs> if it were regular wood, sawing would be faster. It's not regular wood. Um, so let me grab the scrub plane here, and we're just going to take off the majority with the scrub plane. I'm just keeping my eye on that line. Push my dog in so I don't hit it. Actually, I'm going to move this in my vise. A little bit of a gap there. Make it easier to grab over here. Back this up. Any questions while I'm doing this? No. No? Mm -mm. Either I'm doing something right or something completely wrong. Maybe they're just waiting with the A very light setting on my scrub plane. Actually, I'm just going to grind it down and take a heavier cut. That, and it's sliding down a little deeper. So let's tip this up, clamp it in here. There, now we're close to the line. I can grab my spoke shave. With the spoke shave, I can get it right down close to that line. Do that side. And all I'm doing here is I'm making a mess. Hey, that's better. Is I'm making these two pieces exactly the same. It doesn't matter if I follow the pattern perfectly or not. 
I just want the two of them to match. So for this side, there's actually a little bit of an indent here from one side to the other. I'm up a little bit high, sorry. Zoom in just a little bit. Focus, there we go. And so to get that, I'm gonna do the same technique I did in the earlier. Start here, take a longer and longer stroke. And I'm using a round bottom plane. It makes this much easier. Am I going the wrong direction? No, I'm going the wrong direction. This palm just sounds horrible. It feels fine, but it sounds horrible. <laughs> it sounds like I'm getting massive tear out, but I'm not. It's okay. So now we've shaped out this edge and this edge. Now I want to shape out the two ends. So I'm going to put this in here. Actually, I'm bring it over here to the edge. And I'm going to grab me something off camera here. Where did the other one go? Yeah, I'll just use these. I really like using a four in the hand. Uh, this has a, a rasp on this side and a file on this side. And then over here, I've got a rounded rasp and a rounded file. And so I'm going to start with the rasp. And I'm going to get it close to the line. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Make it easier to reach. Just like that. Turn the file and smooth it out a little bit more. Turn it around. And I'm going to do this on all four corners. It doesn't take very long at all to give you that exact shape. You want to keep it, keep it light. Don't put a lot of force on the rasp. If the rasp isn't catching, then just change your hands, your hand holding a little bit and let the rasp do the work. Don't force the rasp down into it. Otherwise, you're going to be leaving a whole bunch of grooves. So there we've got rounded here. Now we're going to do the same thing on this end. So I've... Who What's asked that? the question? Let's see. Socket wench I'm going to cut this off because it's a little bit long. Some of this looks more like a job for the scroll saw. You know, if you have a scroll saw and you really like it, great, go for that. I actually find the rasp and file far more fun. So it really depends on what you find fun. Um, and for little things like this, I find it just to be a little bit faster with the file than it was with the scroll saw. Especially with this palm, this would just shred up in a saw. But with a good clean wood, like a maple, it wouldn't take that long at all. Here, let me use this one, a little bit more aggressive. Wow, this palm is a pain. We're gonna go with something really aggressive. My heavy duty cabinet maker's file, uh, rasp. Just clamp this a little bit better. Yeah, you can hear the difference in that one. That gets it to shape really fast. Bring over the foreign hand and smooth it out. Turn it around. Is it Do the same possible thing on this to maybe angle the camera up a little bit? Oh, I'm sorry. a lot of table. And yeah. Or bench, whatever. There we go. Sorry about that. And we're going to do the same thing here. I love this rasp. It is very fast, very efficient. And just like that, I've got the shape I'm looking for. Come in with this and I can fine tune it a little bit. Just like that. There. Now we have <laughs> something on the floor. <laughs> now we have it roughed to the shape we're looking for all the way around there. Sorry, lifting up. Now, naturally, the next thing you're going to want to do is round this all over so that we get that, that smooth profile. We're going to wait on that until we've glued in this little spacer right here. And that's the very next thing we need to work on. And what time is it? 42. And probably the last thing we're going to get to today, which is perfectly fine. And so for me, I've got this little piece of ebony. Oop, wrong camera. There we go. I've got this little piece of ebony that was given to me a while ago. 
and I've been whittling away on anytime I have a little inlay or something. Ebony is an incredibly fun wood to work with. It almost feels like you're working with plastic because it's so dense and so homogeneous and there's almost no grain to it at all. Now what we need to do is we need to cut a spacer that goes on the end here. Now if you have the plan, there will be a little cutout on here on the very tip that shows you the size that we need. Let me show you on these. Focus. And then switch. Two. There we go. So what we need is we need a tiny little piece of wood that fits in right here. And it's just going to separate these two apart. Now we need to know what the thickness of that particular piece of wood is. So I'm going to grab my calipers. Or you can grab whatever you want. And you need to know the thickness of your iron right about here. So somewhere around an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch down from the back. And you're going to find the thickness on there. On mine, it is currently 1.29, 1.3. So I'm going to cut a piece that is 1.3. And so what I can do is actually set my caliper, lock that in here, and use this to scratch that thickness onto here, except for I need it to be a little bit more accurate than that. So I'm going to use my marking gauge. I'll set that right into the mark that I made. And I want to rip something down to be that thickness. And because I'm working with ebony, I'm going to use my favorite saw, my dovetail saw. So let's see if I can actually clamp this thing. Clamp that right down in here. Grab my Bearcat dovetail saw. And we're going to rip this down very, very carefully. I should be saving this dust because you can use it for inlays and other things like that. If you ever looked at the price of old growth real ebony, it's incredibly expensive. Yeah, that's enough. And then I'm going to rotate it and cut off that piece. You can see how black that dust is. It's just incredibly black. Let me see how much. That do I need? Like your heart after your comment earlier? I don't know what you're referring <laughs> to, babe. And we're going to cut that off. I'm just eyeballing the size, making it sure it's a little bit larger than I need. Oh, didn't cut quite deep enough. There we go. Now, I want to be able to glue this in between. I've got those saw marks on there. It's really smooth, but it's not quite gluable. So I'm going to grab a fine, fine file. And I'm going to use that to plane this down and basically give that a glueable surface. Just like that. And there, I know you're not going to be able to see that on camera, but I'm going to see if you, see if you can see you can it see almost it shiny, shiny right there. It's a little bit of scratching here in the middle, so I can spend a little bit more time, though I'm probably not going to need that because I'm going to use epoxy to hold this on. The reason I'm going to use epoxy is because I'm working with some really weird woods. The ebony is a very oily wood, and palm is an unknown substance for me. Um, so anytime I don't really know the wood, or I don't trust its adhesive ability, or the way in which it works with um, PVA glues, uh, epoxy really is the way to go. And especially in this case, because I'm going to be working with water, epoxy is um, a far better substance for water. So any question while I'm setting this up? How much time do we um, Oh, 47. Good, good. Let's see, John Juggler asks, what is the breakability of palm? What is the what? Breakability? Um, that's kind of an odd measurement to put on something. It is relatively breakable. It is, it's, it's, it is very stringy wood. Very, very stringy wood. Here, I'm actually going to file the very edges of the palm where it's going to be connecting because they're a little bit rough. This will get those into glueability. There's the 
There's that and that. Making sure those made up. Nice and nice. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these together and I'm going to do it with some five minute epoxy. Now, if I wasn't going to be doing this live, I'd probably do it with something a little bit better than a cheap five minute epoxy. Um, and I have an entire video where I went and talked about epoxies. But for something like this, with just a small piece, the amount of force this is going to be under, this is more than strong enough. Um, I use a bit of masking tape and I'm going to put this on the bench and I'm actually going to mix up that little bit of epoxy right here on the bench. I find this just to be the fast and easy way to do it and it doesn't make much mess. Oop, wrong button. That's uh, where to put the... My popsicle stick disappeared! I just picked it up a little bit. Oh, I'm oh, sure your children right there. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to grab the epoxy. Don't want to make that move. I'm going to switch over to two. Any questions while I'm mixing this up? Uh, no. Squeeze up just a little bit of each one, equal amounts. Run off the excess. Put the cap back on. And then we're going to mix this. Now normally I'm going to tell Google to set a timer for a minute, but with this small amount... Oh, you should have everybody else's... Yeah, I, I, I try not to do that now. I did that <laughs> and I, I had a, a gag at the end of like, uh, set timer for all Thursdays at 11 a.m. to watch James on Wood by Right. And apparently I set the timer on like 10 different people's um, Google calendars and uh, had some people that were not happy with me. So sorry about that if you were one of those. <laughs> Minor details. Okay, there, we've got a good amount on here. Now, a couple things I need to be worried about is number one, squeeze out. What if I get squeeze out in between these two pieces down in there? Um, and really, I'm not that worried about that with the squeeze out coming out in there because, oh well. What's, what's the problem of having squeeze out in there? But if you are perfectionist about, perfectionistic about it and you are really worried about that, then you can put it on your ebony piece and just scrape it away from the edge. And then you can put your ebony piece on there. And I'm gonna start with my ebony piece out away from where I want and then slide it up to the point that I want it to be. Something like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing again on the other side. Is this, can people see this, babe? Mm hmm Yep. And I'm taking my time on here because I want to have a good adhesion all So I have all a couple across. questions while you're doing that. Uh, just a moment. Making sure that's where I want it. And then again, I'm going to set this away from the edge and I'm going to slide it up to where, where I want it. That way all the squeeze out comes out on the outside rather than having it on the inside. And then I'm going to grab handy dandy little squeeze camp. With epoxy, you don't have to worry about too much pressure. Uh, epoxy, you don't need a gluing pressure of an immense amount in order to hold pieces together. Uh, with PVAs, you need, you need gluing pressure. Uh, epoxies, you don't. And I wanna make sure that everything is aligned. I wanna make sure that I'm aligned back here at the, the heel, and that is on there. Sweet. Let me see, do I need to do anything else? Actually, I am going to rotate that. I've got a couple seconds. Let us do this. What I'm seeing is that apparently there's a little bit of a taper in this spacer that I have, and that taper is spreading these two too far apart. And so I'm going to move it around, and I'm going to look at it from this side and see. Nope. No, it was. Yeah, it's fine. But keep in mind, I only have five minutes to fiddle with this. I probably should have on some gloves. So we have to clean that all that. off. <laughs> but I'll go wipe them off with my wife here in a minute and she won't know. Why don't you wipe your face? <laughs> Give your lips a Make sure everything is where I want it. We're even there, even there. Space those in. Wiggle things around and then set it aside, leave it alone. We're just going to leave it like that. Five minutes later, it'll basically be ready to use. Uh, well, actually, five minutes is its working time about a half hour is what you really need for it. So what we're gonna do is, next time we're actually going to work on the blade. And I'm gonna grind this down to the point where it's ready to sharpen. And then next week I'm gonna show you how to grind it. Um, and then we are going to go into sharpening this. We're gonna go into drilling uh, the hole, getting this in place, 
and then doing all the final prep on turning this into this. So hopefully at the end of next week, we will have another fully ready knife. So this should be a lot of fun. <laughs> what kind of questions we got? Well, John Jokler just super chatted and said, good show, dance clown. <laughs> I hope you got your money's worth there. <laughs> so it's a wood, it's a hand tool shop, so that's not the electric slide. <laughs> now, as a, uh, a note, um, when grinding these out, you have several options. Uh, number one, the radius on it is set up for a six inch wheel, which happens to be the right size for a grinder. And yes, they would have originally ground these on a power grinder. Just that's the way it was. Um, if you have a, a sanding belt with a six inch wheel, fantastic. Um, I'm going to be using an electric grinder because it, well, even with electric grinder, it still takes me about 45 minutes to an hour to actually grind this into shape. Um, if you take it too fast, you're going to ruin the blade. You've got to take it slow. You've got to take your time. We're going to be talking about that next week. Um, you have a couple options. Number one, you can use an electric grinder with a six inch wheel and grind it to shape. Number two, you could get a hand crank grinder and try and hold this accurately, or you can get your friend to come over and grind it while you run it back and forth for 45 minutes to an hour. Or you could actually do it on sandpaper with a dowel. And I, I, I know of people who will take it to this extent and they'll put sandpaper on a six inch tube or something of that nature, <clears throat> and they will hand shape it down in, or they'll have a, a curved stick to put the sandpaper on and shape it that way. Wow, um, my estimate is somewhere around 10 to 12 hours to do this well by hand with sandpaper, but if that's your bailiwick, go for it. Um, that seems like a video I should probably do, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use the power grinder. <laughs> <coughs> so most any benchtop grinder with a six inch wheel, uh, you can pick them up on you know Craigslist, Amazon, uh, not Amazon, Craigslist or Facebook for you know, 20, 30 bucks for a used one and they'll, they'll do this rather quickly, uh, 45 minutes to an hour or so. Um, so I've, I have ground down of the 35 that I sold, well, of the 33 that I sold, I ground down 10 of them, I think it was. More people, I was expecting like three or four people would want me to do the grinding, um, but about 10 people wanted me to actually do the grinding, and a few more wanted me to do the sharpening too, um, which I was rather surprised that many people wanted me to do it. But I guess because it took me, uh, you know, 10 hours or so of grinding to do. So thank you for that. <laughs> do you have any questions? No. No? Oh. Uh, well, I, yes, sorry. I had a mom joke going through my head. When you stopped, did you come to a grinding halt? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you started this. I just want you to know that. I did. Um, so there's a reason I married her. So earlier. I haven't know what it is, but I, there's a reason I'm sure of it. You asked me. I just all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, okay, hang on. Steve does stuff. Says no brass pins? Question mark. Yes, we are going to be doing brass pins. Um, on mine, I don't have a brass pin on here um, because. I don't need it. We're going to be talking about that when we actually get to it. Um, some people are going to want to brass pin it in there. The The more common method is actually have a brass pin going through and to pin it over on the ends and they'd actually have little brass washers to fit on there. I tried to find brass washers of the right size to sell, but I could not find them anywhere. Um, McMaster card didn't even have them that size. Um, and so we're going to be talking about that. I'm actually going to be doing mine with a screw, um, which is another method I haven't um, I, I've seen a few other people use, I actually haven't seen it used in a particular straight razor because most of the time they'll peen over a, uh, um, a rod onto those washers. And we'll be talking about both methods. Uh, the kits that I sold came with the brass rods as well as screws. Um, so if on this end you do want to put a brass rod through there, great, but that'll be something we'll actually do later and so I'll be talking about that next time. We want to glue it together and then it's easier to put the pin through and hold it in place. Um, in, in most applications I've seen, the pin is there for aesthetics and as a backup in case the glue breaks. Um, in this case, with wood on wood and the light amount of use it's going to see, I, I really have no problem with it and so I don't want to put the pin in it. Um, but it, would, it is one of those nice things to have a pin on both ends. It just kind of balances it and make it, makes it look nice. 
All right, there was one more question. Let's see. Does Space City Junk Removal ask, does epoxy hold better than wood glue and in general? Um, in most applications, epoxy is stronger than wood glue. But in most applications, both are stronger than the wood. In this particular case, with palm and um, ebony, ebony is a very oily wood. Um, anytime you're working with a lot of the South American woods, the African hardwoods, um, they, they tend to be fairly oily. And you can prep them uh, with denatured alcohol or something like that to wipe them down, and regular wood glue will work fine. But in this case, palm is kind of an unknown, um, and it's not something I have a whole lot of experience gluing it. And so in that case, I'm just going to use epoxy. Epoxy, in this case, will work better than uh, wood glue. The other thing is that epoxy is waterproof. It is one of the, the few glues that I have no problem using outside. Um, even Tight Bond 3 that says it's waterproof is not waterproof. <laughs> All the tests that I've done, if you want to see that, go back and look at my wood tests. Uh, you take it outside. If it's in a wet condition, it will break down. Now, the thing about Tight Bond 3 is once it dries out again, it'll be perfectly fine. But when it's wet, it has no strength. Um, and so I'm not going to be using a PVA glue to hold this together because this will be used around water and I don't want it you know, falling apart while I'm shaving because the, the, the glue got wet. Um, so in that case, epoxy is, in, is, is the far, far better choice. So good question. Can I sneak in one more quick question? Oh, yeah. John Jugler wants to know, how is the chisel test going? Uh, it is coming along. I'm a little over halfway through it. Um, each... Each chisel I'm testing is the vast majority of a day worth of work, um, and so it's it's taking a while. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to have it done um, by April, but we'll see. Um, my my goal is to have the the video out first or second week of April, um, and as long as I can get the time in, I think I can make that work. But I've got a lot of other projects that are coming down, so yes, it is coming along. Um, and for those of you who are patrons. Um, those are available to the $3 and up patrons. You can actually go and see the stats on the, the test thus far. I have those um, provided on Patreon. So thank you for those of you supplying there. Uh, yeah, that I'm really looking forward to because we're already seeing some very interesting, uh, some very interesting results coming out of that. So yeah. Cool. Well, I think that'll about do it. Um, next week, we'll hopefully be getting this all done. And I will have this ready to show you um, sharpening. And there's a thousand different myths and strategies and ways of sharpening and we're going to be trying to get as many of those as we can as well as getting this all together so stay tuned and we will have fun then so i think that'll about do it for today do i miss anything else i hope not no cool well until next time then have a wonderful day play the holding game oh she, hang on i oh, wasn't oh, even oh, paying attention all right okay. here bye